we, uh, we just came back from uh, our Calgary church. And we heard you had a good uh, celebration last Sunday. And you become sweeter with your spouse. Those of you that are married, uh, you've learned a lot more in relationship. Praise God. Well, today is a special day. Today. Um, it is our day that is what we call the State of the Church Annual Meeting, where we come together as a family and discuss what we have accomplished together in the previous year. Um, you know, even nations have a State of the Nation address and all of that. Um, I believe it's important for the church as well to talk about the state of the church. How is the church doing? How are we doing? What have we done? What have we accomplished? And for those of you that are visiting with us today, um, this is a special day. It's a different way we do things today. We've kind of shortened things up so that we will be able to incorporate the, the uh, state of the church uh, annual meeting today. So we, we, we feel that we don't need to have another day just to have a meeting. I believe that God is just as concerned with, with our business of the church. I believe God is concerned that we need to be accountable to, to what we do and what we have done. And, and that's what the church is about. I believe that we're accountable to God and to, to the members of the church to do that. So it's important that we talk about it during our Sunday celebration where everybody can be here. And we don't have to set, set another schedule for this. At the same time, we wanted to be able to incorporate it, so we wanted to shorten some of the other segments of our celebration today so that we can incorporate our State of the Church uh, meeting and all the reports that we have. And so before we have our meeting today, um, I felt it would be appropriate for us to revisit the purpose of the church. We need to always talk about uh, what we're about, why do we exist, uh, why does the church exist, especially at Champion Life Center? Is it here to help meet your needs and your family? Is it here to win the world for Christ? Well, before we can talk about the purpose of the church, we must first define what a church is. Because many do not have the right concept of the church. Uh, maybe many do not understand what church is. Uh, many of us have grown to... Uh, probably grown up into a, a, uh, a family that you know, looked at this church as an institution where you go to or a place. Uh, today we, we will understand what the church is about. We have already learned that the word translated as church comes from the New Testament Greek word called ecclesia. And that's where the Spanish get the word iglesia. Right? So ecclesia means the called out ones or the gathering of believers. And so that's what the body of Christians are called. Uh, we're called the ecclesia. Um, and so we're the family of God. Therefore, the church, as we have learned already, many of you have been attending here. You have learned this already. And we just need to review it. For those of you that are visiting with us, uh, um, it's our... It, our intention here today for you to, to know what the church is about. And so the church is not a place or a building. Uh, all right, so it's not a place you go to. It's a family you belong to. You belong to a church, a family of God. So it's in reality, you don't go to church. We don't go to church. You don't go to a worship. Uh, you, you, you don't go to, to a place to have church. What we do is you go to a worship celebration or you go to a Sunday school or you go to uh, some spiritual activities of the church, but you don't go to church because the church is us. Amen? So you and I are the church. And so uh, you belong to a family of believers called Champion Life or CLC. Right? That's who we are. And you belong to that. All right? So tell the person beside you, you, we belong to each other. All right? We, we belong to each other. We, we are a family of God. All right? And so having said that, let us now look at the purpose of the church. Our purpose as a family of believers of Jesus Christ, especially, specifically here at Champion Life Center. 
We need to revisit this and understand we define our purpose in our mission statement. This is who we are. And you look at our mission statement, our, the CLC mission statement states this, Champion Life Center exists to exalt God through loving worship, to edify Christians through biblical teaching, to evangelize non-Christians through faithful witness, and to exhibit godliness through a positive presence in our community and the world. That is our statement. That is our purpose. Why do we exist as a church? Who are we? Uh, why do we do what we do? Well, everything is over there. The purpose of the church is, is fourfold, um, and we have called it the E4. So for those of you who are studying in our firm foundation, uh, our team life, you probably learned this. What is the E4? What is E4 is, number one is to exalt God, to edify believers, to evangelize the world, to exhibit godliness in this world. So all of what we do revolves around these four foundational principles. So let's start with the number one. And number one is to exalt God. Right? That's in our statement. So the main purpose of us gathering as is we want to exalt God. Amen? We want to praise Him. Exalt means to praise highly. To increase. So God has called us to live for the praise of His glory. That's what the Bible says. So we are here to exalt God, to glorify Him, the one who created us. We come together to celebrate His presence. This is the time that we can come together to thank the Lord, to praise Him, to give glory to Him. And that's the worship time that we come here. We come to exalt Him. So we, we do that through different things, all right? We do that through different ways as we as we praise Him. But I need you to understand that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says who we are. 1 Peter 2, 9, it says you are, all right? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, all right? 1 Peter 2, 9. It says this, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So in other words, friends, you and I are a special people. Tell the person beside you, you're special. <laughs> He's, you and I, when, you, when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what your life was. Maybe it's just a mess. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe you have messed up your life. But when you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're now a special person. You have now become a royal priesthood. You have now become part of, of God's family. And because of that, He's taking you out of darkness into His marvelous life. And because of that, you need to be praising Him. That should be our things. You may be proclaimed the praises of Him. That's why when we gather together, we praise Him. We glorify Him. So I, that's why I encourage you as a congregation. Remember, this is the family time. This is the church. And I just want to remind you, don't miss the praising of Him. So you don't come just to hear a message. You come to praise Him. And if you're late, you can't praise Him. You understand? Am I being practical here? All right, so we, we come to praise Him. The time together as believers, we're going praising Him, glorifying Him, exalting God together as a family of believers. And that's what we do. Um, and we need to do that. And we do that by singing, by playing instruments, by clapping our hands, all right, by, by dancing, doing those kind of things to what? To, to, to praise Him, to give glory to Him. Now, we can do that while, you know, maybe if you're watching a basketball game, all right, and your team is winning, you'll be jumping up and down, yeah, come on, yeah, go ahead. All right, but when it comes to praising God, we have a problem. Somehow we think like, you know, I, I, I can't do that, you know, and yet God is the one who created us, and that's something you can praise Him for, and you can praise Him for what He's done in your life. And that's why when we come together, we celebrate. That's why it's a celebration Sunday. When we come together all week.
great. God has been there for you. He's provided for you. He's blessed you. He's kept you. He's redeemed you. He's done all kinds of things for you. When you come on Sunday, hallelujah. Amen. You're worshiping and praising Him. Thanking Him. Glorifying Him. That's exalting God. So we come to praise Him. You know, we do that through the music, dance, arts, and all that. Well, you see, music and the arts are expression of adoration. And that's why we as a congregation, we want to redeem the arts. Because the, the arts have been used for many things, for entertainment, for whatever. You know, but why not redeem the arts for the glory of God? Yes. That you use your singing abilities and the dance and the drama for the glory of God. So that's what we do. As a church, we exalt God. All right? The second thing is to be edify believers. As, as a congregation, that's the, to the second E, is the edify believers. This means to educate. Edify is to educate, to instruct the believers on how they should live as fully devoted followers of Christ. To, to instruct us to mature. Friends, when, when we learn about the Word of God, the, the goal is for us to mature. That's why we're being taught the Word of God, so that we will mature. Here's what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. We're reading this from the NLT. I like this translation, the New Living Translation. It says it this way. He is the one. All right. Now, these are the gifts gave, uh, Christ gave to the church. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So friends, the goal of the Edification, the goal of equipping, is so that we will be instructed to grow up and mature. Amen? So tell the person beside you, grow up. <laughs> Amen. Alright, grow, grow up. It's a, it's a positive thing, alright? It's positive. We grow up. We mature. Alright, I don't think any one of us has grown to that point that we have grown, fully grown already, and then we reach the full stature of Christ. We haven't. If we have, then this place will be empty, uh, will be full. Obviously, we haven't. Because when we're fully grown and fully mature, we'll be doing a lot of things like Christ. And there'll be a lot of things we'll be doing differently. Alright, so, obviously, we haven't. We, we still need to grow and to be taught and to be instructed the Lord gave the, the pastors teachers and so on to equip the people of God in our church we accomplish this through through the life groups and and the dip, in the different levels we have life groups for youth and we have life groups for the adults and the young adults and and we have uh, the Pentateuch vision of discipleship, the I-5 in the different levels of discipleship. And we have the school of ministry and the children's church and we have conferences. I mean, we're doing everything we can to bring instruction to the people of God. Are you hearing me? And so we, we, the purpose of the teaching and equipping is so that we will be able to do the work of building up the church. It says there to build up the church. And so we, we are being taught and, and to grow and to mature so that we will be able to use our giftings to build up the church. We need to be instructed to, to learn from the Word of God. And uh, here at COC, uh, you have every opportunity to grow up and to mature. If you're still not maturing, it's not the church problem. Are you hearing? Because every opportunity of the Word of God being presented, the life groups and the, uh, and the conferences and all of those things that are being taught, and it's up to you to be able to come and learn and grow. Amen? And so every opportunity is being done, and that is because God wants us to be taught and to grow. We are called to serve, to build up the church. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says this. Each one should use 
Whatever gift, oh, you changed it. First Peter 4.10, there you go. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in his various work. We use our gifts to build the church. Friends, the more mature we are, the more we understand that the gift that God has given us, we will use to build up the church. Whatever gift that you have, if it's, if it's dance, if it's singing, if it's playing an instrument, if it's the IT and graphic design and website and video and all of this, if, it's, if it was given by God, it was used not for you to just earn an income, but for you to build the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Are you hearing yes. The reason why God gave us the gifts, so we can serve and build up His church. Unfortunately, the world is getting the best of our people. The world out there is, you know, we're building organizations and institutions with the gifts of the children of God. But we're not building the church. And so it's important that we understand our purpose. The purpose of us is to be edified so we mature so we can build the church. All right? Each gift that God has given us, we receive to serve others. Faithfully administering it. All right? So we use our gift to build this church. And then the third E, the third E is evangelize the world. So we are called to evangelize. This purpose is a natural outgrowth of the first two. If we are glorifying God, if we are edifying the believers and maturing the things of God, then the, uh, the natural thing to do is we want to share the hope of salvation to others. I mean, if we have, you know, if we're growing, it, the only natural thing is to be able to share it to other people. The fact that God has redeemed you, God changed your life, He is taking you from where you were to where you are today, then we have a responsibility, an opportunity to be able to share that with other people. To let them know. You see, friends, if you knew the, the cure, if you had the cure to cancer, you would share it with your friends, wouldn't you? You tell your friend with cancer, this is the cure. You need to take this. You see, but friends, we don't realize that there are many who have cancer. They're slowly fading away in their life because they're living a life without God. And they're lost and they don't know where they're going. And, 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 and their life is just fading away aimlessly. And then one day they'll be separated to totally away from God. And we know that there is a hope. And therefore if we know, then we will be able to share that hope with someone. To let them know, hey, <laughs> you know, this is the hope that you have in God. That we can share to them the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to obey the Lord by following His commission that He has said. The church is a mission. The Lord has commanded us to do His will. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Read it well. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The Lord has commanded His church to make disciples. Friends, going and making disciples means going outside of these four walls. <laughs> you know, the, the building, to, to go out, to be able to make disciples of all nations. The word nation is the word ethnos. And that's where we get the word ethnic from. It actually means a group, a people group. Alright, and so the nation is where there is a people group. And so God wants us to make disciples of all people groups. So, you know, your school is an ethnos. Your, your workplace is an ethnos. Your, your neighborhood is an ethnos. Wherever you are, and there's a group of people, that's the ethnos. We are to make disciples of where we are. It's not only inside these four walls that we make disciples. We disciple those around us by reflecting the Father and the bringing the Father's heart and bringing the rule and the order of God, the kingdom of God be advanced in every 
ethnos group. Are you here? That's what God's called us to do. So we as a church got to remember that we are to make disciples of all groups, ethnos, right? Making disciples. You and I are the church, and we are to impact our society, our neighborhood, our city, our nation. And the church must look like the community that we're in. Now, if we, if we look around, we need to understand that if we are really doing what we're supposed to do, we should be reaching out to our community, and the church needs to reflect the community that is outside. So we are not a Filipino church. I'll tell you that right now. We are not a Filipino church. We are not a Canadian church. We are not a Caribbean church. We're not a, 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 a you know, a, any kind of ethnic group church. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ for all nations. Are you hearing me? That's the reason why I speak English here. Why are we in Canada? Are you hearing me? Even though I have to translate everything in my mind. But, but because we, we are here and we need to reach out to those that are here, that the language here, so therefore we use the language. Be, th that's why we need to understand that, just in case you're thinking, why are we like this when, when I see everybody's Filipino? Well, we're not a Filipino church. Yeah. Everyone should be welcome to be able to come yeah. and that they will hear the gospel and that we are to evangelize and share uh, and so we, we, we need to be able to reach out to, to those that are Indians and Pakistani and Vietnamese and Canadians and Chinese and, and of course, Filipinos <laughs> and Ilocanos <laughs> and Kapampanga. The Bisaya, they're already evangelized. <laughs> We need to we need to reach out, all right, to, to everyone. Um, you know, going going also means sending people uh, to other nations. That, that that's the reason why we have mission trips, and uh, we 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 also send to to other nations. We we do mission trip. We do missions in Africa. We do missions in the Philippines. We've done the, we've done it in in the West Indies and and Caribbean and uh, Cuba. So we have mission trips that we do outside of our church. We're doing that because we need to reach other nations. It may be costly at times to send people in different parts of the world, but it doesn't cost as much as the life of Jesus. Amen? Jesus died on the cross so that people may know his grace and have eternal life. And that certainly costs a lot more. For us, it's just money. See, but people need to hear the gospel. Amen? So we need to evangelize. That is our, uh, one of our e -fours. We need to do that. That's the purpose of why we exist. And, and letter B, of course, number four, is we exhibit godliness in our world. To exhibit godliness is really meaning to exemplify Christ. Is Jesus said that his disciples must be an example in this world. That's why we need to mature. Because if we're not mature, we will not accurately reflect, reflect Christ. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If we are going to, uh, you know, if we're going to go out there and, and then share to other people, you know, if we're going to be an example to this world, what example are we showing? We need to be able to represent the Father well. When the Father wanted to be known, He sent His Son. And His Son, Jesus Christ, came which is an exact representation and reflection of the Father. He came and He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's how much He reflected Him. And He said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And so I represent Him in every area. I don't do my own thing. You see, so Jesus represented the Father. And if we are going to be representing Jesus, if we're going to, to represent Him, we need to be more Christ-like. Amen. We need to, to mature in our ways so that we could reflect Him in our lives. That we could also reflect the Father just like Jesus. That we need to be able to, to represent Him. We do that by being taught the ways of God. 
If we want to be more like Christ, we need to mature, and to mature, we need to be taught. And that's part of the edifying and the teaching and equipping is to, to be taught the ways of God. That's why Jesus said, when He said, go and make disciples of all nations, He didn't stop there. If you show verse 20, uh, He said, go and make disciples. And then later on, He says, teach them to obey what I have commanded you. Wow. So we are not just to make disciples, we are to make disciples by teaching them what we have been taught. We are teaching them to obey the principles and the laws of God. We teach them to obey His Word. And so that's what the church is about. The church is called to be able to bring up believers so that we will be edified and be taught the principles of God so that we can accurately represent and reflect Christ in the world out there. Your life is the testimony that people are going to see. Yeah. Amen? And so we need to be taught that. We need to be uh, accurate. We need to mature. And that's why Jesus says, if you go make disciples of all nations, you need to teach them to obey all the commandments that I have taught you. And therefore, my brothers and sisters as a church, we're called to teach you to obey this word. And so if we teach you, don't get offended. Are you here? Nobody said amen. No? <laughs> okay. When I said blessing, amen. But when we are taught, if, if for example, we're walking and we're going away from God, our priorities are going away, and, 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 and we, we get distracted by the things of this world, then someone in the church has to be able to say, hey, something is wrong, you need to obey the word of God. Amen. Don't get offended. Don't leave the church. Are you hearing me? Because this is what the church is about. The church is about teaching you to obey the principles of God, the Word of God. And so when we, when we have someone telling us, you know, you've been distracted. Maybe you're, you know, you haven't come, come to church for some time. You haven't been with the believers. And the Bible says, do not forsake the coming together. That's the Word of God. And if that is says, then if we obey that, then we need to understand somebody is going to tell us. People that care will do that. Because we are a church. Amen? We're the family of God. So we exhibit godliness in the world. We cannot exhibit that godliness if we are not taught. If you have children, imagine if you have children and you don't teach them the ways in your life, in your home. You don't teach them any principle. You know, you just let them go ahead and do what you want. They become unruly. They will represent you out there. They're going to say, who's the father of that child? Who's the mother? Who, who does this belong to? Very unruly. Why? Well, the parents did not raise them up. The parents did not take time to develop them and discipline them and correct them and teach them. You understand? So it's important that we raise up sons in the house who will be able to follow and obey the principles of God. Amen. So that's number four. Exhibit God in it. It says Matthew 5, 13 to 16, uh, uh, verse 13. First, he said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? All right. And then go to verse 16. He said, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Friends, <laughs> Your light that shines is what's going to bring praises to the Father. Amen? Let your light shine. What kind of light are you going to shine? If it's the light of the Lord that you're going to shine, it brings praises to the Father in heaven. You know, with your good deeds and all the things that you do for the Lord. Praise God. So how you live your life is a testimony. We can make a difference in this world through living a life that reflects Christ. The champion, Jesus Christ, overcame death and broke the power of darkness and lives in us. The Christian life is a champion life. Amen? Amen. You live a life of a champion because the champion is inside of you. Yes. He overcame death. He broke the power of darkness. Amen? So we can live a champion life. 
we can make a positive impact in our world. You know, because, friends, the life that we live is not just, you know, getting up in the morning and going to work and then, you know, working all day and 12 hours, 16 hours and going home, watch some TV, go to sleep, wake up the following day, do the same thing over and over for six, seven days a week and 52 weeks a year. That's not a life. That's not what God called us to do. There is more to that life. Amen? Amen? There's a life that we have in Christ. That we no longer live, but Christ who lives in us. And that's why God wants us to have an abundant life. And that's not a life, that routine every single day, that's not a life. God wants you to have a better life. There's a lot more purpose for you than to just work every day to pay your bills. I got to tell you, at the end of that lifetime, years of you doing that, what will you look back to? I work every day until I got sick. Is that our testimony? No. We got to have a life. You got to make a difference. You got to make an impact in this world. You got to make a change in the way things are around this world. God has called us to that. So tell the person beside you, get a life. <laughs> get a life. A champion life. Here at Chapter Life, you can get a life. All right? You gotta get a life. There's a lot more to life than just work and paying bills. God has called us to make a difference in this world. So let's do that. Amen? We should not be confined only to the four walls of the building. We must be touching lives of ordinary people at work, school, at home, at business. Our lives should make a difference. Now, now you have seen the purpose, the E4 of why we do what we do and why we exist. We must keep these principles in their proper balance. We need to balance everything. We are not to overemphasize one at the expense of the other. In other words, we cannot overemphasize worship that we just sing and dance and do all of that, you know, at the expense of the teaching of the Word of God, the Scripture and evangelizing. And so what will happen is we will have people who are ignorant about the Word of God, who have a shallow understanding of who God is in their lives and His principles. And yet we can sing and worship. But we need to have the Scriptures as well to understand this. We've got to be a balance. A church that overemphasizes the edification of just teaching of the Word of God. If we overemphasize that from the worship of God, and exalting Him and evangelizing, then we will have just a bunch of people that are well informed, but have no relationship with God. Because all they did was keep getting and receiving and receiving and receiving, but they're not really worshiping the Lord, they're not reaching out to others, and it becomes uh, ingrown and becomes stagnant. And we don't want to overemphasize on just evangelism. Some will say, let's just evangelize, win souls, win souls, win souls. Let's evangelize at the expense of worshiping God and exalting Him and the biblical teaching to solidify and strengthen that person in the Word of God. We can't do that either. Otherwise, we'll just be looking at numbers, having a growth in numbers, all right, but immature Christians. People don't grow up and they act up. All these principles, friends, must be emphasized on a regular basis to keep a church strong and healthy. That's why it's so important that we understand the purpose of a church. And, and, and let me share with you a little bit, a little bit about the three-legged stool. If you've learned this, those in Leeds have learned about this a little bit. And that is that we, we got to understand the balance in this three-legged stool. All right, you know the, 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 the stool that has three legs. If one leg is too long or too short, it's not balanced. And it, it, it won't stand. It's not safe. It's not stable. But when you have all the three legs that are, are, are the same length, then it's balanced. In the same way, the church has this three-legged stool. You know, and the three legs of the church is the celebration. The first is the celebration. And that celebration is, is where we exalt God. That's where we edify believers as well. We come together, we celebrate. And we celebrate the goodness of God. We exalt God and edify believers. Friends, let me share it to you. When you see the church as it is a church, a family of God, 
When you see the church that this is my family, that it's a family of God, then you will miss it and you can't, you know, you can't wait to see your family. Right. Yeah. Here. See, it's, it's, a, it's a concept, it's, it's a mindset. If you see the church as the family of God, you, you, you can't wait to see your family. You're excited to meet your family. I want to see my family, especially if you only see each other once a week. Wow, I, I can see my family. I want to see them. I, get, I, I miss you guys. I, 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 I want to see you guys. I don't know if you miss me, but we, we miss you. And we, we want to see you. All right? We, we miss the family. We want to be here. You know, I travel all the time, but I want to be here. I could assign somebody, but I want to be here because it's my family as well. And because I see it as a family, then I miss you guys and I want to belong and I want to be a part. Why? Because I'm a family. But if you see the church as an institution or a place that you go to, then you will miss it. What I mean is, you're not going to care. Because you have no relationships. Because you only see it as an institution where you can go in, have your, you know, worship celebration. You've been to church. Quote, unquote, I've been to church. I'm okay now. And I can live the rest of my week whatever way I want. But I've been to church. Because we understand a church to be a place that we go to. We don't a church. We don't understand that we are to church. And we're a family. That celebration is the time when we, as the family of God, come together not only to look up to exalt God, but to look to one another and belong to one another. That is celebration. That is church, where we have relationship with one another. That's the way God intended the church to be. Not an institution where you can go to and leave. No. The church is a family. That's the reason why when you become a member of Champion Life, what do we do? We introduce you to the whole family and we say to you, whether you like it or not, you now have the rest of the family here. The big family. Amen? Amen? That's why we tell you. That you don't have to face your problems alone. Because you have the family of God. Amen. Amen? That we are a big family. So we got to be able to have relationship with one another. That is a celebration. So we see it not as an institution. We see each other as a family of God. The book of Hebrews tells us that we not forsake the coming together of believers. The second part of this, this three-legged stool that has to be balanced with the celebration and then the care, which is the life group. You know, the life groups is where you are discipled. This is a small group discipleship. This is where we are able to have relationship, a closer, intimate relationship with one another. And we ask you, you need to belong to a life group. If you are here at Champion Life Center and you're a member of this church, you need to belong to a life group. Why? Because the life group is where you are able to express yourself, where people can, can, can share with you, where you can have care for others, that you belong to one another. That's a life group, where there is life. It's not just a Bible study. It is a place where you can have life. Where you can do life together, you can go out together and build relationship with one another and care sincerely for one another. To build up each other. Amen. That's that's life in the life group. And that's why we ask you to belong, because that is where you grow to maturity. This is where you are challenged to grow to maturity when you study the word of God and you have others that you can have interaction with. Then you can mature. You see, I always say this, and I'll say it again. <laughs> and that is, you are the most mature person in the world if you're by yourself. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. You're the most mature person if you're by yourself. Why? Because nobody else can challenge you. Yeah. You can say, I'm the most mature person. I'm most forgiving, I'm the most patient, I'm most loving. Why? Because you're by yourself. The only way you're going to know how loving you are and how caring you are and how patient you are is to have other people with you. <laughs> Start with your spouse. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> you, you see, so, so friends, we got to know. And that's why we have life groups. Belong to a life group. Right? You need to belong. So that's the balance. You have the celebration and you also have to belong to life groups. To the smaller group, 
You know, in, in, the, in the New Testament, they went from the temple courts and, and they, they listened to the apostles' teaching in the temple courts and they went house to house and they had small groups as well. Imagine, they didn't have mega buildings like this. They had small buildings where they could gather. They went house to house and had relationship with one another. That's why the church grew powerfully. Yes. Because they had relationship. And thirdly, it's the sense of community. All right, so we have the celebration, the care, and then the community is so important. Because if all we do is just the, 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 the caring and the life group, but we don't have any community outreach, we're not evangelizing to anyone. And it just becomes self-serving. Uh, self-serving. It's just about us. And that's not the way God wants us. He wants us to have community. We need to be able to reach out to others. And if all that we do is community, some people just do community, community, community. Let's visit the, the seniors' home. Let's do the feeding. Let's do this. But there's no celebration. There's no life group. You become a charity. That's what the charities do. So a church... Is balance. You have the celebration, you come Sundays, you exalt God, you edify believers, and then you have the life groups, you're edifying believers, strengthening believers, right? And then you're able to have community with one another, where you're able to now uh, reach out to others and evangelize. Amen. You know what it says? Uh, uh, a, a, a man of God said this statement. It's a very powerful statement. He said, A.W. Tozer said that. He said, a church that is soundly rooted cannot be destroyed. But nothing can save a church whose root is dried up. No stimulation, no advertising campaigns, no gifts of money, and no beautiful edifice can bring back to life the rootless tree. Wow. It's so true. You see, when, that, when the church has foundation, when the individual has foundation, we, we, we go deep and we're strong. The tree that has roots, when the problems come and the, the winds and the storm come, you know, you're able to stand because you have roots. But when you have no roots, you know, there's no foundation. And he says, when that, then the problems come and, 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 and we're shaken by that. He said, there's nothing, there's no, no advertising, there's no money, there's no beautiful buildings that can raise that up and you have no roots. It's dried up. And so we, as a church, we avoid being dried up. Amen? Amen. We don't want to be dried up with no roots. We can't be just a tree. Some people try to be like a tree. No roots. I don't want to be apart with anything. I'm just a tree. I won't be planted anywhere. <laughs> There's no tree that will grow like that. You keep transplanting them, eventually it dies. But you see a tree that, it, that brings roots. You know, that's the tree that will grow and get the nutrients to be able to be strong. You see, this, the, the wind and the, and the rain and the sun... You know, we'll, we'll, we'll strengthen that trunk of the tree that has roots. But a tree that has no roots, what happens is the same rain, the same sun, the same wind will knock it down and make it rot. Why? Because it's dead. No life. So, friends, it's not the elements, it's not what's around. It's the roots that we have. And that's why the church has to be balanced and we need to understand it. Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, his builders labor in vain. You see, it's the Lord that builds the house. And if this is the Lord building this house, are you a part of that house? Are you a part of what God is building? Are you rooted in it? Are you obeying the things that God has for you because you know this is God's? Or you see it as an institution? We can come and go. Because God is building His house. And those that are in His house will be built up as well. Because His house has a church. Amen? So here at Chapman Life Center, we'll work hard and try our best to be the church that God wants us to be. We're not perfect. Yeah. We're not perfect. But you know what? We'll do everything we can to be the church that God has called us to be. And we will teach what we need to teach. We will strengthen. We will address issues. We will do what we have to do. You know, today, 
Later on, you're going to listen to the report. You will see what we have done as a church. Together, we have touched many lives. You know, by the way, my brothers and sisters, the ministry, although this church here that we have established has only been seven years, we as a ministry have been around for 24 years. Next year, we'll be celebrating the silver anniversary of Champion Life. Amen. putting things together for next year because you know what in that 25 years we planted 13 churches 13 all right you know five of them uh, uh six of them we've already been able to release to to become independent they've gone and now we've got the others the seven other churches that we are raising up that's part of champion life but 13 churches in 25 years god has blessed us Right? And so I want you to know, and some of them I've married here, you know, 24 years. I've seen the baby, now an adult. <laughs> and we've married some. All right? And we have dedicated some. All right? And I've heard, uh, I was telling my wife one time, I said, you know what? I feel old when I'm dedicating the child of the mother that I dedicated. <laughs> And she said, now you're going to feel older when you find out that your son is now dedicating someone. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so that's the way it is. But we at Champion Life, we have been raising up sons and daughters in the house. And we have been doing everything we can to build the church. Let us continue to put all our energies, our efforts, and our resources to advance the kingdom of God. At Champion Life, we are one church. One church serving one God with one goal to reach one world, one life at a time. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We thank you for reminding us once again what it means to be a church and why we exist as Champion Life Center. We pray today, Lord, that this message has inspired us to continue to fight the good fight of faith, to continue to rise up, to be mature sons in the house, that we can advance the rule and the order of God, that you will be pleased with our lives, Lord that we can accurately reflect and represent you wherever we go. So Lord, today we thank for your word. And I, we pray, Lord, that your word will just be in our hearts, that we will continue to uh, cherish this word and continue to remind us to grow and to mature in your ways of God. And so Lord, we pray even for the rest of this day today, Lord, may you be glorified in all the things that we'll be doing today. So we commit this to you now, and we pray God continue to lead us by your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God.